Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another video. This week I wanna talk about life after narcissistic abuse. Um, I think often we hear a lot of videos about narcissism. I think it's such an important topic because it's not something that we're taught growing up. It's not something that we're even aware of. We might have heard the term here and there, but until you go through a relationship with someone who's narcissistic, you have no idea what you're dealing with. And it's not a normal breakup, it's not a normal relationship, and I think it needs to be paid some attention to in order to not just hopefully educate yourself to prevent yourself from being with someone who is narcissistic, but I also think it's extremely important to understand the aftermath of what goes on while you're healing, what goes on after this person is no longer in your life, the post-traumatic stress that you go through, um, and all the things that you have to rebuild and work on within yourself that you didn't think you had to do before and that wasn't really at the forefront of your life was this huge part of really learning how to heal from this. And so in this video this week, I want to go over life after narcissistic abuse. I wanna give you some of the key things that mostly everyone is going to struggle with. And I want to start to give you some tips to begin to heal and rebuild your life. Now, if you are new to this channel, my name is Stephanie. I am a life and relationship coach. Every week I post videos ranging from a ton of different topics on self-development, mental health, codependency, narcissism, emotional abuse, really the key things that were not taught growing up. I think understanding these concepts will allow you to heal from your past, reprogram yourself, and really have an amazing life. I mean, isn't that what we're all striving for is to have a good life, to have peace, have happiness, and understanding what that really means and how do you achieve it. I think one of the biggest things that people will struggle with after narcissistic abuse is replaying the relationship over and over again, especially when you're replaying those beginning stages of the relationship when things were really, really good and looking back and not understanding what happened what just happened? <laughs> how did how did this just go from zero to 60? How did this go from we were in a good relationship and I thought it was going in this direction and all of a sudden now it's completely different and you've changed and you're not the same person that you used to be. And this goes beyond just kind of growing apart in a relationship. These are like drastic changes that someone makes, whether it is as soon as we moved in, things changed. As soon as we got married, things changed. When we had a baby, things changed. And all of a sudden this person became completely different than the way I used to be. So replaying what happened throughout that relationship. Where did I miss this? Where did I not see this early on? And really trying to dissect all those red flags that you did see, but perhaps they weren't predominant enough. Perhaps they weren't really hitting you in the face in order for you to go, oh yes, no, this person is 100% not well. It, it was probably more subtle things. And this is really where the psychological and emotional abuse comes into play because it's not something that you've ever seen before. It wasn't something that was really black and white to you then. Now it would be. Um, and so replaying what happened, who this person used to be, mourning who this person used to be and that they're not that person anymore, reliving those really good times where you had a connection, where you thought you were with the person you were gonna be with for the rest of your life and having to accept that I guess that wasn't real. I guess that person wasn't real. That's, that's a concept that no one else, unless you've been through it, will really understand what that feels like for you to look at someone or look pa look back on that relationship and say to yourself, I guess that wasn't real. I guess that person really wasn't there. That's something that you don't understand what that feels like unless you've actually experienced it because any other relationship you've been in, it was mutual or you did feel what was really there. There were just wounds that happened between the two of you that caused the relationship to end essentially. Whereas this is on like another level because you never really were in a relationship with a real person. You were in a relationship with a character. That's not a fun thing to have to accept that what you had 
to that person wasn't the same as what you felt. And it's not a matter of they just didn't love you. It's a matter of the person's actually incapable of having a deep connection, of being in a real relationship in the ways that you were. It's more of understanding and having to accept that versus it having anything to do with you because it has nothing to do with you. I think a really big thing that a lot of people will struggle with after being in this type of relationship is, and this is the really messed up part, and this is really where you'll get really down on yourself, is this concept of you want them to come back even though you know they're not good for you. When you know, if you're really honest with yourself, deep down, you're like, there's a part of me that wants you to turn around, that wants you to say, I messed up or I, I'm, I need to get help and I really am going to work on this. And I'm not just saying words like I probably had in the past that I really know, like I got some issues and I'm gonna work on myself and seeing this person want to be better, want to change because you haven't really accepted the fact that they're not going to and it's impossible that and wanting this person to choose you, right? Because you're taking what they're doing or what they did personally, that what they did or how the relationship ended or who they can't be has anything to do with you or still wanting this person to be in your life, even though there's a part of you that's like, no, I don't want that person. No, I do want that person. I want them to, that kind of cognitive dissonance, that kind of confusion that you have, again, no one will understand that unless you've actually walked in these shoes and understand what it means to be in this type of a relationship with this person. Because what you're really, what's really happening is this person's actually chipped away at your self-esteem. And now you want this person to turn around and make you feel like you're enough because everything that they've done throughout the course of your relationship with this person has made you feel like you're not enough. Now, part of it could be of their own abuse and what they did to you and you were unknowingly, you had no idea that what was even going on and you were unaware that you were giving your power to someone else. And I think that's a really key thing to understand. Throughout the, this relationship, you didn't realize what this person was doing and you came from lack, you came from insecurity, you came from codependency and so you just gave a lot of yourself in a lot of unhealthy ways to this person. And so now you're sitting here not knowing who you are, not feeling okay in your own skin, and you're having to rebuild. And that's that part of you that wants that person to turn around and come back. It's not you, it's not you at your healthiest. It's the little girl, the little boy that just didn't feel good enough that wants this person to turn around so they can feel either by revenge or make them feel like they're enough for you to want to turn back. I hear so often from clients, from um, you guys here on YouTube, it's funny that you always get the same things and it's amazing that you can hear someone else's story and it sounds identical to yours. And you're like, wait a minute, that, that literally is exactly what happened. I can't tell you how many clients I've talked to where I'm listening and it's almost like they're telling me it's like my story coming out. And that's why this is a personality disorder. That's why that this is a real thing because it's the same, not, ident not exactly the same every single time, but for the most part, you're dealing with the same type of character. You're dealing with the same type of disease. And so we're all witnessing it. I think where it really will hurt the heart for a lot of people coming out of these relationships and I hear this a lot, is that thought of, well, I guess it wasn't real. I guess this person didn't love me. I guess this person wasn't in the type of relationship that I was in. That's a tough pill to swallow when you have to accept that the, all those years, all those pictures, all those happy holidays, all those moments where you looked at them and you felt so happy and content that they probably weren't feeling the same that they probably weren't looking at you in the way that you were looking at them, in that deep way that you were looking at them. Now, what I always tell people, and this is the truth, and it should hopefully soothe you a little bit, but it probably won't help entirely because it's just a tough pill to swallow. It stinks that 
someone is so unaware, so sick, so diseased, so broken in a lot of ways that they can't really love. I mean, how sad, how sad to think back on all those happy times where you felt great in your relationship and you were so in the moment and thankful or, or whatever that was. And that person wasn't or could never have felt the same way as you. That's sad. That's sad that this person has never felt what you've actually felt before. So for you, it was real. And I want you to take those pictures, those memories, and I want you to really embrace that you felt that way and feel good about that. But I don't want you to mourn that someone else couldn't feel that. That is unfortunately their journey. That's their pill to swallow. Sucks for them actually. And you take those memories and you leave and you go find someone else to make new memories with. Having to, if you have to, go through the court system, having to go through a divorce with someone who's narcissistic is not an easy thing to go through. Um, and you 100% have my validation that it is the toughest thing because you really have to pull together all your strength, all your confidence to be able to really go toe to toe with this person. You have to learn a lot of key skills of how to be non-reactive on how to manifest what it is that you want in order to really believe that the outcome that you want is going to happen even though there's so many fears and doubts running through your mind. Understanding that a lot of times you're dealing with a really big beast in front of you, someone that's very witty, someone that's very charming, someone that knows how to cut you. And so understanding that this person while at one point taught you possibly what real love feels like even though it wasn't reciprocated in the ways that you felt um but now this person is teaching you through pain how to actually stand on your own two feet how to actually have the most confidence you've ever had in your life how to learn how to be non-reactive learning how to accept what's in front of you this person if you really really can take this opportunity will be the greatest teacher of your life because what they're going to do and the things that they're going to say are going to try to hurt you so bad that you either have two choices. You can take on that pain that that person's actually going through and feeling and they're just projecting it onto you. You can take that on and you can have it take you down that rabbit hole and completely ruin you, right? Make you bitter, you never move on. And those are probably... The biggest reasons why I started my coaching practice was because I wanted to help people not allow what is happening to them to completely ruin their life. How do you rebuild? How do you heal from this and rebuild and rebuild better, right? How do you have more than you even thought you were initially going to have? You thought what you were going to have was going to be so amazing than to have something that's 10 times bigger and better than you even thought. How do you do that? And so that's what I'm so passionate about. And that's why I made this channel and that's why I do everything that I do, but I digress. Um, having to go through the court system and having to get that divorce and having to go through child custody. And I mean, that's a beast in itself when you realize just how much the court systems don't protect against this type of stuff. Um, it's, it's a tough pill. It's not an easy thing to go through. I do think that there are a lot of key things that you can begin doing and practicing that will 100% help you, number one, go through this process, and number two, get the outcome that you want. Yes, that can happen. Um, I go through all of that in a lot of my programs, and it's what I teach with my clients and things like that. Um, so there is hope. It's not just that the courts just leave you, you know, hanging out to dry, but a lot of it, sometimes you don't get what you want and things don't happen the way you want them to. And having to accept and learning how to grieve and learning how to soothe and learning how to be confident is, like I said, it's, it's all of that wrapped in one. I think learning how to, and this is probably one of the biggest things that I guess most people will struggle with. And it really has to do with kids. If you do share kids with someone who's narcissistic and now you're trying to co-parent, par parallel parent, whatever you want to call it, is having to watch this person now hurt your kids. Hurt your kids either through neglect, through saying things, doing things that you know is completely unacceptable and unhealthy. Having to help your children, depending on the age of the child, understand who their parent is 
um, and not throwing them under the bus, but having to be healthy yourself to then help your child be the healthiest they can be and learning how to teach your child how to deal with this parent and respond to this parent and, and all of that. I mean, that's, we're just gonna put that on the shelf right there because that is a beast in itself. So no one teaches you this. This is not something that you're prepared for and you're going through this process and dealing and grieving and having to do your own work and now you're having to help your child on some levels do the same amount of work but in bits and pieces because you can't just spew all of this out on your child all at once, especially depending on the age of the child because they won't even understand what's going on. So having to watch what's happening is not easy. And again, if you have never gone through this and you're not trying to co-parent or parallel parent, whatever, with someone who's narcissistic, you don't understand. Like, why can't we play nice in the sandbox? Like, why can't we do this? Like, maybe you should try harder. And you're just like, what? Like, <laughs> I'm doing everything I possibly can, but I can't just do it all and make it nice. I have to also set the tone that this is actually reality. This is the person that I'm really dealing with. And again, most people won't see that. Most people will just see maybe you're being unreasonable. Maybe you need to let that go. Maybe you need to do this. Maybe you need to try harder versus them not seeing that what you're trying to do is have healthy boundaries. What you're trying to do is parent and not trying to make it cushiony and nice for the other person because they have to step up. And it's a very tough, tough thing to go through. And of course you go through all of that. And like I said, you're still in the process of learning how to rebuild and heal yourself. And there are times where you're alone now, whether you are co-parenting and you have to share time or you're just single again and you're kind of like starting over and you're at the age where you were like, okay, time's a ticking. <laughs> I thought it was going down a road and now I'm not. There's so many different types of situations, especially that I coach where depending on the age, the gender, the relationship, how long they were with the person that people will go through and really learning the concept of rebuilding and learning the concept of really how to love yourself. What does that mean? That word is thrown around a lot and understanding what does it mean to truly be healthy inside and take care of yourself. That's why I designed all of my courses. That's why I talk about self-parenting. I'll actually link up my self-parenting course. Um, I'll actually link it down below. It's an amazing course, super affordable, and I go into extensively what you begin, what you can begin practicing every single day to really understand that concept because that is really the key. I mean, that is essentially mental health right there. Um, so go check that out if you're interested. But understanding that process of rebuilding and that it takes time. But when I tell you, if you take the time and you do the work and you practice this stuff and you get better, I mean, I'm literally looking out at my backyard and this beautiful home and my coaching practice and my life and my relationships and everything that I have came from rebuilding. So you can 100% have everything you've ever wanted to. You just have to do the work. And I tell people, the work's tough, don't get me wrong, but it's more consistency. If you're consistent, you things will start to get better really quickly. Um, you just have to be consistent with yourself. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope it helped in any way. Please send this to anyone who you think might be suffering from narcissistic abuse or going through this process after life with someone who's narcissistic, whether it's a family member or a romantic relationship, what have you. Um, I hope you have enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week.